Hi everyone, Knoopsy here, and in this episode of The Phone Battles, let's compare the iPhone 8 Plus to the Galaxy Note 8. In terms of design, an iPhone and a Samsung phone have never really been closer. Both are that typical glass sandwich design with a metal band going around the phone. While the iPhone has a matte band, the Note has a glossy band. But despite some of these similarities, these phones are incredibly different. Both phones are the exact same size, but the Note 8 with a 6.3 inch screen outdoes the iPhone with a 5.5 inch screen. So how can both phones be pretty much the exact same size but the Note 8 has a bigger screen than the iPhone 8 Plus? Well, it's all in those bezels. The Note 8 has some very minimal bezels on the top and bottom, while the iPhone looks almost prehistoric with its thick AF bezels. But despite the whole bezel situation, each design has its own pros and cons. The iPhone has a great placement for its very fast fingerprint scanner home button, while the Note 8 has a terrible placement for its fingerprint scanner that's just way too high up. It does have iris scanning, which is pretty good for some cases, but it's not that reliable, not that accurate, and doesn't work in a whole lot of situations. So, either way, security in the Note 8 is kind of iffy. But in contrast, the iPhone does not have a headphone jack on the bottom, so that may be a deal breaker for some people. And the Note 8 also has a trick up its sleeve, quite literally, with the S Pen. The S Pen found inside the phone makes drawing or handwriting incomparably great to the iPhone or really any other phone. The S Pen is not only great for drawing or handwriting, it's also great for just straight up navigation. Tapping on things in the phone is much more precise and plus for swiping on the keyboard, it's a great experience. While the Note 8 has its S Pen, the iPhone has 3D Touch built into its display, basically letting you do a whole bunch of tasks faster with more context if you 3D Touch on certain things. In all honesty, I wish both of these phones had both of these features. Having a stylus and 3D Touch on one phone would really make for a killer experience. And on the subject of displays, the Note 8 takes a pretty big leap here. The 2960 by 1440 AMOLED display compared to the iPhone 8 Plus's 1080p display is quite a different experience altogether. The Note 8's display is brighter, it's sharper, it's more vibrant, but not really as accurate as the iPhone, and the black levels are nearly unbeatable. There's also that very useful active display mode that shows a whole bunch of important details and information without having to actually wake up your phone. There's really only one thing I don't like about the Note 8's display, and that is the home button. It doesn't really feel that realistic, but it, it does the job. The iPhone 8 Plus's display has been improved slightly from last year with a bit more vibrant colors and still the same accuracy as previous iPhones. And while those black levels really don't match up to OLED displays at all, it's still pretty great for an LCD panel, some of the best black levels I've seen. What you also get is the new True Tone feature that has been present on the iPad Pro for a little while. Basically like auto brightness, it auto adjusts the white balance of the display to match the room you're in. So if you're in a room with warmer colored lighting, the display will automatically adjust to match that color balance. If you're in a room with cooler, stark white lighting, the display will get much whiter and a bit more bluish. I gotta say though, the Note 8 pretty much wins in this case for its display. It has a lot of features that are very useful, and it just looks truly amazing. It's just the ultimate screen for a phone right now. Now let's dig even deeper into these phones and talk about specifications and performance. The Note 8 has 6 gigs of RAM and the new Snapdragon 835 processor, while the iPhone 8 Plus has 3 gigs of RAM and the very hyped, totally brand new Apple A11 Bionic processor. And if you hate Apple or not, it's quite a cool name. Here's a quick comparison showing off app loading times between the iPhone 8 Plus and the Galaxy Note 8, totally unscientific, but just for quick reference on app loading times and how fast these phones really are but it all depends on future performance. My Galaxy S8, for example, slowed down after a few months of usage, with things being slower to open, apps reloading, and some other stuff as well, including battery life drain. However, the Note 8 with more RAM may be able to hold up longer in this situation to keep its current speed. My 7 Plus a year later though, still feels very fluid, so long term the iPhone may feel faster in the future, but of course, only time will tell. 
The Note 8 has a larger battery than the iPhone 8 Plus, but in the end, the way things work out, a day of usage is probably what you're going to get. Maybe a few hours in the morning of the next day to watch some videos and use social media, but really not much more. These are not really extreme power user, battery warrior phones. But one area where the Note 8 has a lead besides overall capacity is charging. The Note 8 has fast charging with the included wall adapter and USB-C cable found in the box, and the iPhone 8 Plus does also have fast charging, but doesn't include a fast charger in the box. You have to get that and the USB-C to lightning cable at the Apple Store, which don't really come too cheap at all, so you have to go out and buy that whole feature separately, basically. Doesn't really sound right. The Note 8 also has wireless charging and fast wireless charging with Samsung's own fast wireless charger, but even on the basic normal wireless charging mode, it still charges faster than the iPhone 8 Plus on the same wireless charger. So in terms of charging, while Apple has made some advances to make it further ahead, it still does fall behind. Now for software, the Note 8 has Android 7.1 with Samsung's much improved skin on top, while the iPhone 8 has the brand new iOS 11 software update. Without going too far into the whole iOS versus Android debate, here is the basic premise. iOS in nature is very simple, which is both a blessing and a curse in some areas. It has gotten a lot more features, but in general, it's still very simple. And Android, especially Samsung's skinned Android, is for those who want to do a whole bunch of stuff on their phone, just everything possible, plus they want a lot of customization through launchers, icons, and just everything in general. One thing I do want to point out is the Note 8 takes better advantage of its very large screen size. Multitasking is a real joy to use, especially in conjunction with the S Pen, it's a great experience as well, and those floating windows and multi-windows can help you get a lot more stuff done at the exact same time. It's great for productivity. If you just don't want to switch your operating system to Android or iOS or vice versa, then your choice is pretty much made up. But if you don't mind switching or just adapting, there's a bit more to talk about. Oh, and by the way, Bixby can be turned off, so don't hold it against Samsung phones anymore. It's pretty much all good now. And last, but definitely not least, in 2017, phone cameras are incredibly important. So let's see which overall camera experience is better. The iPhone selfie pictures are a bit more detailed and contrasty overall, but only look as lively as the Note 8 pictures. For the front-facing cameras, the clear winner is the Galaxy Note 8. It handles dynamic range a whole lot better, it just looks better, it's sharper with a higher resolution, and compared to the iPhone, it just looks, it looks a whole lot better. Each of these phones have dual 12 megapixel rear camera systems on the back, with one regular lens and one telephoto lens. All these photos were shot with HDR on, and HDR definitely makes a huge difference for these pictures, and it doesn't really take too long to process after you take a picture, so for me, I just leave it on all the time. The Note 8 handles exposure well and produces very vibrant, sharp, stunning results. The iPhone 8 Plus takes beautiful pictures too, with more accurate colors. It can overexpose in some situations, I've noticed, but the majority of the time, it's quite good. The telephoto cameras in each of these phones allow for very creative and dynamic photos. It's probably my favorite dual camera system integration. They produce very similar results to their main cameras, but the Note 8 has optical image stabilization in its telephoto camera, so shots can turn out less blurry, while the iPhone does not have optical image stabilization. For the DSLR style portrait and live focus modes in these phones, the iPhone does a better, more natural job in my personal opinion. Photos just look more realistic, especially with objects as well, but you can adjust the blur after the fact in the Note 8, but still in my personal opinion, the iPhone takes more consistent, better looking portrait mode shots. You also have that new portrait lighting feature, but it's nothing really too special in my opinion, it's more like applying filters to your photos. For low light photos in the main cameras, it does get pretty interesting. Sometimes the iPhone produces better photos, and sometimes the Note does. The Note seems to handle more moderate low light photos, like not super dark, while the iPhone does a slightly better job in much darker situations. Either way, low light in these phones is pretty much very comparable.
4K video on both of these phones looks awesome. But keep in mind the iPhone can also shoot 4K video at 60 frames per second, which is new, but the Note 8 tops out at 30 frames per second. Colors on each do look pretty good, but the Note seems to bump up saturation a little bit. The iPhone can shoot a bit better looking video at times, but the Note also has stabilization in both cameras, so telephoto video is definitely a win on the Note 8. So here are some of the main points and final thoughts about each of these phones. So the Note 8 has that new, fresh 2017 minimal bezel design and has a much better AMOLED display. The iPhone's display still is quite good obviously, but it can be quite hard to beat that AMOLED panel. Each of these phones also have their own design pros and cons like I mentioned earlier, so just weigh out some of the positives and negatives. Performance for each are fairly close right now, but the iPhone does feel a bit faster in some situations during daily usage, and chances are that speed will last for many, many years, especially with that really epic A11 Bionic processor. Software, of course, is minimal on the 8 Plus with iOS 11, but there are many new features, but if you really want a lot of features and you want to be able to do everything on your phone, the Note 8 is probably the best choice. And each of these cameras here are really good with their own strengths and weaknesses, but no matter which phone you choose, the camera experience will be great either way. And that's pretty much it for this video, so which phone do you prefer, the iPhone 8 Plus or the Galaxy Note 8? Let me know in the comments down below, let's start a little discussion. Like this video, subscribe for more iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, and iPhone 10 content, and of course a huge amount of other technology videos as well. Thank you for watching.